Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. Now, last week's Shanghai Platinum Week heard of the projected downward path of platinum. I think it was a very sober message that came there, that at current prices, you know, the, the industry called the platinum group metals industry is going to decline to such a point that mines are going to close. So you have to have a change in that pricing. And what has happened is that there's been a, like a twin buying on the western side and also on the eastern side. And the eastern side doesn't resell, but the western side sees that as having supply. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it affects the price badly. And I think it's going to have to create a balance because platinum group metals are going to be needed in the hydrogen economy as we see. And we know that they do help to build a better planet in all sorts of uh, opportunities. As we could see, there were so many different new opportunities mm -hmm. coming through from platinum that came out at the Shanghai Platinum Week. That we just hope it can be reflected properly in the price so that you get a competitive price that the mines can keep going and that the supply is there. Otherwise, obviously, people will be looking for something else mm -hmm. to replace platinum group metals. Now, tell us about Petro Diamonds uh, looking to refinance its $250 million loan notes. Yes, so, you know, the diamond industry is under strain at the moment. And so you can see all the diamond mines, are, they're trying to make sure that the capital expenditure is very effective and smoothed out and that their costs are lowered mm -hmm. quite fast because they still want those capital expenditures to go on because there's an issue with supply. You can see when you look at future supply of natural diamonds, it is undersupplied. That's why they see in the mid to longer term, you know, the price of diamonds will rise. In the meantime, you've had this blow from lab grown diamonds, laboratory grown diamonds. That is now receding because people are suddenly seeing now, you know, the difference between lab grown and natural is so huge that, um, you know, the price of the lab grown diamonds has fallen to such an extent that some people are only using them for industrial. Uh, if it's in semiconductor use and things like that. So there's no margin for the jewelers anymore in that lab ground. So they've swung back to natural ground diamonds, but they want a good story on those natural ground diamonds. So you can see where the diamonds are being mined is being verified. The whole diamond story will be on a cloud. You know, you can see where, how many people were employed, how they treat the environment, everything you need to know about that diamond. So when someone is buying it, they're buying a great story, and that is going to improve the margins as well, th it is assumed. Lastly, tell us about Hive Hydrogen uh, completing pre-front-end engineering design on its green hydrogen to green ammonia project. You know, this is a great private sector project. You know, we heard the president last night talking about Bukhubai, and obviously, hopefully, Sassel will be involved there, and hopefully there will be a sort of an effort to make sure we've got two ports involved in green hydrogen, green ammonia, but this is the entirely private sector. And you know, the chairperson there is Tulani Gabash. He was uh, formerly with Eskom. He then went into renewable energy and he was a former uh, chairman of Standard Bank as well. He's now focusing on the whole idea of creating green hydrogen to get green ammonia. And the use of green ammonia is growing. And you can see that the project is moving from a sort of a mid-stage development to an advanced stage development. And, you know, there's what they call feed, the, the design. Pre-feed inquiries are going out this week, in fact. So, you know, it's going to be great for the Eastern Cape because when you look at it, this is 105 billion rand that they plan to spend there. And it's just first phase. You know, they're talking about second phase, third phase, fourth phase. You've also got a situation of an automotive industry there. And it would be fantastic if you know, th th there could be a link between this hydrogen production and the automotive industry, and that we start leading when it comes to hydrogen-powered vehicles, because that is really the answer. When you think of the way you know, the batteries, uh, metals are having to be found, people are scratching around on the planet, whereas you know, the platinum group metals are there. Uh, we can see they should be in greater demand. It could start with the bigger vehicles. You know, you could have bigger vehicles being produced there that are produced by hydrogen. That hydrogen could come from the Kucha base where there's a, a zone where development and training is taking place at the moment. 
But obviously, it's a little bit longer term. Everything, unfortunately, is a little bit longer term. That's why this, this is so difficult. You know, you can't just rush into it. You've got to start working with all your off-takers. And, you know, the reports back from Hive is that, gee, off-take is no problem. You know, people are rushing through their, their new uh, visions for green ammonia. So you get the green hydrogen, you get the green ammonia by adding the nitrogen. It's still got this planet safety that you've got. Right into the maritime industry, it looks like it's going to clean up the mar maritime industry. Instead of using diesel and all these other fuels, they're going to be using this. Obviously, it has to be competitive. So you can see Hive working with the Toshu of Japan, trying to get the most competitive price in the world. But at the same time, the fertilizer industry is phoning, and saying, hey, can we have some of this? And now, which uh, I was sort of taken aback by, coal mining industries in Europe, they're phoning through and, and saying, you know, instead of using coal for our power stations, we started to develop turbines that can actually produce the energy from, with the help of green ammonia. So, you know, that is so, another big thing. So just about every day you find a possible new application, but nothing really final yet. Mm. And so this has still got to be a final investment decision, probably only coming in 2026. But in the meantime, it needs to get a lot of support, I think, from government because there's huge potential there. And I think the huge potential was also spelled out in the president's speech last night when he referred specifically to green hydrogen, he referred specifically to Bukhubai and needing growth, left, right and centre, needing jobs, left, right and centre. I'm glad also with the speech, a lot of emphasis on infrastructure because <laughs> that's so important and that provides the growth uh, and it provides the jobs through the growth. So hopefully we'll start seeing things moving and I hate the negative comment that comes through from some of the politicians. You think, well, gee, we're paying these guys salaries instead of saying, hey, look, you know, we want jobs as well. You know, we'll put our shoulder to the wheel until everybody's employed. No, you know, you get some of them wanting to drag this down and that is disappointing. Thanks for speaking with us, Mark. Great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. Please subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly. Please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.